Hello, welcome to the Very Wool Podcast. My name is Diana Hawthorne and you can find me online as Delaware Spinster. Today we're going to talk about a couple small finished objects, a lot of mending, and a lot of whips. Um, so let's get started. Um, I want to talk to you first about what I'm wearing. This is the Comfort Fade Cardi by Drea Renee Knits or Andrea Mowry. It should not be a surprise that it's an Andrea Mowry pattern because I love her patterns. Um, this one in particular, I did modify a little bit, but uh, basically it is a hand spun combo spin um, sweater and I'm so happy with how it turned out. I finished it in January. I've been wearing it pretty much nonstop. I wear it an awful lot and considering I've finished two other sweaters already this year that were not necessarily started this year, but, um, but this was the first of the three that I finished. It really still has been getting good wear, even though it's not my newest um, finished sweater. So this is sort of a cropped version. I did crop it a little bit to go with dresses. And because I have so many longer things that it's nice to sort of alternate and do some crops. So here's the back. The sleeves you can see are, first of all, shorter because you know I have to have shorter sleeves. And they're also completely different and that is just fine with me. I especially love that I got this pop of orangey yellow on this one that I really don't have concentrated anywhere else in the sweater. You can see it, it does appear elsewhere, but not significantly. Um, and this is just, it's so squishy. I'm trying not to overlap my microphone, <laughs> um, but it's got this squishy garter shawl collar. Um, and you can see, it's just, oh, it just makes me so happy. It's all of the colors, basically. It's just completely, um, you know, this combo spin has the whole rainbow in it, which I love. Um, this is, as you can probably tell, reverse stockinette, um, for most of the sweater. And that's, um, uh, that's following the pattern. So it's supposed to be a faded sweater. Um, it's originally written for DK yarn, and I think, uh, I think originally she used a La Bien um, DK yarn, which I'm sure would have been absolutely lovely, in a fade of a few colors, um, because I'm a spinner. I saw this and I thought this would be a great pattern to spin, so I did this combo spin. So, um, if you don't know about combo spins, basically you use hand-dyed braids, um, that have, especially if they have like a, a repeat to them, a sequence of colors, you strip them and then you combine them and you spin them together so you get all these little stripes and all this combination of colors as opposed to a braid that maybe has three or four colors, you end up with so many different um, colors and, and different hues of different colors. So. I used mostly my own hand-dyed braids of Merino, but I did use a little bit of Frabjus Fibers, BFL, and Polworth. Um, so yeah, I used 12 braids, so it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of colors. It took a very long time to do this spin. I barely have any left. I have one skein that's not even a full skein, and it's quite a bit thicker. Um, so I sort of avoided using that until the end, um, and it worked out. So I love this sweater. I wear it constantly. It is not everybody's style, but it's definitely my style. It's super cozy, super squishy, um, and it also, it's, it's not pilling too bad considering it's largely fine wool. Um, so I think it's going to hold up pretty well is my point. Um, it's warm, but it's not too warm. It's, it's quite a bit colder today than I normally expect this time of year. So I'm just doing it. I'm wearing it. It makes me happy. I am also wearing um, machine knit socks, but um, that I had finished a little while ago. But I'm not going to show you my feet because I think it's really hard for podcasters to show you their feet. And I've seen a few people try and it never looks really glamorous. So we'll just pretend that you can see that I'm wearing hand knit socks. I like to wear my socks, my um, hand knit or CSM socks um, with my Birkenstocks. It makes me happy. 
it's comfy and cozy and then people can see my socks but I'm still wearing sandals. I don't know. It's again, it's a look that I like. You may not like it and that's okay. So um, speaking of socks, we're going to talk about socks quite a bit more. I'm in really a sock kind of a um, place right now since I got the CSM, uh, the circular sock machine. I have been cranking a lot of socks and it's really exciting because I've been acquiring sock yarn like many people. I'm very attracted to sock yarn, um, like many knitters I should say, but then sometimes I don't know what to do with it or it doesn't quite work for what I wanted or um, I don't get enough um, or I go with colorways that are just um, not flattering on me for sweaters and that type of thing. So, um, so I do, I'm still very excited to, um, make socks right now because I do have so much sock yarn and I now have a way to knit socks efficiently and in a way that, I mean, it's, it's just really fun. I like it. It makes me happy. So, so I have two finished pairs of socks and you may recognize these. I think I showed you them last week. Um, last week in episode four, which I in error called episode three while I was talking, but you know, everybody makes mistakes and I don't know how to edit yet. And I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm working on it. So, um, I showed these last week, I think as a um, work in progress, but I did go ahead and graft them. Um, and I still need to block them, but they look pretty good. So this is some of my hand dyed um, two ply sock yarn in the colorway that I call Pandora's Aquarium. Um, but it's also, this was actually kind of exciting. This was some of my first ever wool yarn that I bought. Um, I used to do yarn that was on sale at Joann's or Michael's, nothing wrong with that. So it was largely acrylic yarns, um, sometimes cotton yarns or blends. But, um, but I was mostly into crochet in the beginning or just knitting simple garter scarves, right? So I did not um, do a whole lot of garment making for the first couple of years. And then when I was approaching my, um, my wedding, I wanted to make something really special for my honeymoon. So when I got engaged, I ordered a bunch of Hawthorne fingering um, yarn from Knit Picks which if you are not familiar with Hawthorne, which is what these are, um, Hawthorne is a two ply, it's an 80-20 sock yarn. So 80%, I believe they call it a Peruvian Highland wool. Um, and so it's like a coarser wool, but not, it's still next to skin soft, it's just fine. Um, and 20% nylon or polyamide, I think they call it, and that it's the same thing. So, um, so that's Hawthorne, I love Hawthorne. But I had never even knit picks as an online um, knitting store. I had never ordered from them and I had never squished this yarn. I just saw it and I heard good things about it. And because I was um, getting married and, um, and if you didn't catch it, my last name is Hawthorne. That's my married last name. I wanted to have a shawl to wear on my honeymoon once I was officially a Hawthorne. So, uh, so I ordered a bunch of different Hawthorne fingering back then they had, this was only a few years ago, but they separated like Hawthorne speckle, Hawthorne kettle dyed and, um, and Hawthorne tonals. And I think there was even hand painted. Um, now I think it's just Hawthorne fingering, but this is a colorway that I think is still available it is called city lights. It was a Hawthorne speckle. And, um, and I just had a little bit of it left. This was indulgent. This did not even go in the shawl. I had planned the shawl to go along with my, um, engagement ring, which I had designed. Um, so I intentionally had different colors in the shawl. I'll wear it at some point, um, in one of these, but, um, but this was just, this just hopped in my cart. And then of course I used the other yarn to make this beautiful shawl that I love and I still wear. And I had this one sitting around, like almost a whole skein of it for a long time because I didn't yet knit socks. And, um, and I didn't know what to do with it. I, I had one skein of sock yarn and it's, it's, I think it's like 392 yards. It's not even a 400 yard, um, skein. So then I just had nothing to do with this yarn. 
Um, and I eventually, I used a little bit in, um, in a scrappy project. So then I had even less than what would make a pair of socks. And what do you do with that? And ultimately, um, that's why I did some contrasting yarn here because I still had some of this left. I know it's a great sock yarn that has a reputation for holding up really well, but, um, but I just didn't have enough to make a whole sock comfortably. So anyway, so they are sort of a contrasting heel and foot um, situation that you don't normally see with socks, but you don't normally see socks anyway, if we're being honest, a lot of the time you don't see them. So, so that's my first finished object. And then as promised last week, I talked about doing um, a self striping sock yarn for the first time on my CSM and I did it. So I'm very excited to share these with you. Oh my goodness, they are so pretty. It's silly to hold up both. Uh, although I will say you can see here, um, my stripes are just a little bit off in terms of the repeat, which is totally fine by me. I do not care. Um, if you see um, my toes, you're gonna see that the stripe repeat is different and it's the same direction. It's just a few off in terms of where I started. These are knit top down. Um, so the cuff started at a different spot basically, which is totally fine by me. So this is, they're just so beautiful. I just love them so much. Um, so this is a sock set from Freckled Whimsy and she called this failures are okay so i thought it was a nice way to let myself off the hook for my first self-striping sock yarn i was so paranoid as i was starting to make these i went so slowly which is fine right it's still it didn't take me that long um but they are just they're so soft it's a four ply um merino nylon classic sort of sock yarn um, it's her serendipity base if you shop Freckled Whimsy. And I think this Failures Are Okay is still available. It's taken me a long time to figure out why this was like considered like an oops um, kind of a colorway. I mean, I think it's absolutely beautiful. You can see there are a couple of situations here where there's not a ton of contrast in these um, sections. I still think they look great. I really like them but I'm, I'm guessing that's what um, she didn't like as much or wasn't as happy about, or um, I don't know. Anyway, I love that it came as a sock set with these, the hot pink. I certainly had enough to do the heels and toes for both. And the truth is I still have quite a bit of this yarn. This is all coned up for me to use my CSM. Um, you really have to put it on a cone first. And I still have quite a bit. So I do plan to make a second set, but the problem is I don't have as much of this. You can kind of see the green through. There's just not much of this. So I'm hoping I have enough for two toes. And what that would mean would be that I would do this kind of sock again um, with a different heel um, from one of my own hand dyed or one of my stash. I don't know that there's something in particular that I want to use for it, but, um, but I, it's a heel, so I don't care that much. So anyway, so I think I'm going to make a second pair. These are just absolutely gorgeous. They're on my Katrinkles sock blockers, adjustable sock blocker, which I absolutely love. It was a wonderful gift from my husband at Christmas. So, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm going to make another pair. But in the meantime, I've been working on other um, socks. So I've got another pair that I cranked today that I still have to graft. And you can see I picked up the stitches to graft. This is one of those old yarns. It's so exciting with the CSM that I get to use a lot of sock yarn that I bought over time and just had sitting. I mean, this has been balled up in my stash for the longest time. Um, I will double check when I write out what it's called, but this is a non-wool sock yarn. It is intended to be a sock yarn. It, I think it is discontinued, of course, because this is so many years old from my stash. Um, I want to say it's 
knit one crochet two or something and um and the colorway is pettywick that's what my brain is telling me um, i've long since got rid of the ball band but i do have it in my ravelry stash so i will share i just can't stop touching it because these are so soft um of course they're like you know polyamide nylon you know whatever acrylic um of some form um so they have like a nice sheen to them they're super soft, super stretchy, and hopefully they're gonna hold up for a long time because I would not buy this yarn today. Um, not just because it may not exist anymore, <laughs> but um, but because I, I really do stick to wool for the most part when I'm shopping, or natural fibers, I should say. Largely wool, but definitely um, more natural fibers. So I don't love a non-wool sock yarn at this point, but I also do love this sock yarn. It's super soft. So I cranked these this morning and, um, and I have to finish those. And then I also, because I was just in that mood, um, went ahead and used something else from my stash. So you can see these aren't even taken apart. I used two socks of the same pair basically. Okay. So I still have to take these apart and get rid of the, um, scrap yarn in between and the um, cast on bonnet but um, this is a yarn from Neighborhood Fiber Company. Um, I got this as a not a de-stash but it was like a mystery fiber bag um, of fingering weight so there were a few um, skeins four different colors in this um, mystery grab bag and none of them were quite a hundred yards none of them were labeled um, in terms of the colors which I knew in advance that I wasn't getting to pick the colors I knew in advance it, it costs less right and doing the mystery grab bags um, I knew that um, that it could be irregular colors or um, things that just like didn't work out and didn't become a permanent color in their collection which was totally fine it is still their um, studio sock base which is a really solid it's a um, four ply wool nylon sock but it's hardier than a lot of the um you know like the classic four ply um wool nylon sock so Pluses and minuses there. It's not quite as soft um, and there's a little bit more tension so it's going to have a little bit more negative ease even in the same um, size. It, it just kind of, it's going to feel like, um, like it's tighter basically. But I think it'll hold up well. However, um, when I was cranking these, three different times I hit a knot. And I wish when I had wound them, I had paid enough attention and stopped enough to resolve those knots and um, do a better join somehow, because these are just, just kind of sloppy knots. Again, I paid less for this yarn, so, um, so you know, that is totally fine. Um, and sort of to be expected and I wound the yarn I went from it being on a skein to it being on a cake and then which means I was watching it I was holding it and then to it being on a cone so in all of those processes although I have machines that help me do those things fairly fast um, I still felt those knots go through my hands so this is on me that I didn't stop and try and fix something or um, just make a, give myself some type of a warning or something. I don't know. I could have done something creative. I did not. So as I was cranking, I would just get to a knot. And then by the time you see it, you're a round or two further. And unlike knitting by hand, where I can tink back and I will tink or frog back and pick back up, I'm not so great at doing that with the machine. I don't think there's a way to just tink back. Um, in terms of frogging, I can think of ways to basically cut 
the yarn and um, and then you know fix and go back or do um, some waste yarn and then graft two socks. I mean, it just seems like that'd be crazy. So what I am, the way that I'm thinking of this, because it, I do like this color. It's, it looks more red on the screen than it does to me in real life. It's, um, somewhere between what you're seeing and a little bit more subdued, um, like a terracotta kind of orangey brownie color, but I like it and it's good yarn. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity and when these little knots um, wear out, I'm going to have holes in these and then I get to practice my sock mending of my actual hand knit socks because um, I so far have not had to mend any of them because I'm so new to the socks. Like I, I've been wearing them. But, um, but I have maybe 10 pairs now that I wear in rotation and I've only, some of them, you know, I'm just finishing now. Some of them I finished in December, probably, uh, late December were my first ones. So I don't yet have socks with holes and I'm going to put a bet on these ones. These ones are going to get holes first because of the fact that they had these joins that I did not account for. And, um, and it's a lesson learned in terms of next time I'm winding um, yarn or putting it on a cone. If I see those knots, I should stop at that point when it's easier. And I have a few ideas about what I could do. Um, but it also will be a lesson learned later when I get to mend these and um, and I get to practice using my mending loom or um, or even just my darning mushroom um, and mend my first actual knit socks. Because when you mend socks that are commercial socks, like these ones that I'm currently mending, um, it's just different. You can't, you know, I can see that this sock is knit in structure, right? You can see the little V's in that gold toe and you can see this looks like dropped stitches, right? But I don't have, honestly, the patience. I, I do have needles this tiny. I do have thread this tiny, but I'm not going to try and re-knit that row. I'll show you how I mend these. Um, it's just not the same for commercial socks. So anyway, so I'm excited to someday have holes in these socks and, um, and I'm just using it as a, as a lesson learned that I should have paid more attention earlier on. Isn't that generally true, right? That, you know, prevention is the key and that's what I should have done, but that's okay. So my next whip. Um, the other things that I've been working on this week have been mending. I have made a huge dent in my mending pile. I still have a mending pile, but um, I've done a lot of little mended things and um, that's kind of what I want to talk about. So um, as I just showed you, these are some commercial socks. I love these socks. You can kind of see they have a, a cute little pattern that unfortunately it's not like the wisest choice to do this for socks but um but they used like a finer um like just it looks like just nylon kind of yarn underneath there so it's almost sheer in some of this pattern these socks are old I got them at Kohl's in Wisconsin years ago or something. I mean, they are, they're old. So I can't complain that they haven't, I wear them as dress socks. They're super, super um, slick and thin. And I love the little scalloped edge that they have, which you can barely see anymore. Eh, you can see it. Um, I can't complain that, about how they've held up because um, again, I've had them for over a decade for sure. I remember getting this sock set. So um yeah, I, they're gold toes and now they're getting these big holes and runs in them, right? So that's what I'm working on this weekend. Um, I've been mending some of my 
socks and I just want to show you a little bit about how I do this process because I do think more people should mend socks. I think more people should mend in general, which is why I talk about it all the time. This is a darning mushroom. This is a cheapy darning mushroom. It comes apart for easy packing, I guess. Um, I've been meaning to glue it together because it's really annoying that it comes apart. Honestly, I just wish it would just stay together. But, um, but this is a cheap darning mushroom. I got it at Joann's, Joann Fabric, um, probably $3.50. Um, probably with a coupon. So anyway, um, I slipped this into the sock and, um, and you can see I've been working on this one already. So just like the other one, this one has runs in the toe where they're basically, it's like a run in your stockings, but that's also, it's drop stitches, right? So as a knitter, I think it's pretty easy to see that and to figure out what to do about it. Um, Again, I'm not going to try and pick up drop stitches and do a knitted process because this is such fine. Um, it, it looks like um, nylon, but, um, but anyway, there's something called wooly nylon that I actually use in my serger machine that looks just like this. Do I have some? Yeah, I do. Could I knit this? Like... A knit darning style I guess I could um, but I'm not so what I'm doing is I'm doing some needle weaving and you can see this is an area that um, that I have already it looked just like this and now I've woven sort of informally it's not perfect weaving it doesn't matter all that much I'm trying to extend the life of these a little bit longer but um, but yeah I just choose little area I'm using embroidery thread in a pretty good match although it's not a good match for the toe and then I go across and then I go up and down and then I do another section and go across and go up and down and that's how I'm mending these and it's worked on other commercial socks my husband's socks are holding up really well so um so that's what I'm doing for fixing these socks because I honestly still love these socks and I have on various occasions gone back to Kohl's. I'm not a huge um, fast fashion person um, at this point in my life, um, but I have tried to see if I could find these again and they just don't seem to exist. Um, you know, nothing that is exactly like this. So anyway, I'm trying to make them last and I only wear them on special occasions. Although now that I really like wearing my hand knit socks, I'm sure I'm going to wear them even less. Um, but anyway, that's what I've been working on. And I also have been doing just basic, um, to contrast that, just basic machine mending. So just like with my knitting and quilting, sometimes I do it by hand, old school. Sometimes I do it uh, by machine. So I wear undershirts a lot of times, just like a basic, you know, cotton camisole kind of a thing, right? And they get these little tiny holes. So one of the things that I do is just mend the holes. I do a little patch. You can barely see the hole anymore because I patched it. And then I do a stretchy um, machine sewn zigzag, basically. And this one I had to patch a few times. Um, this is also what I do for, uh, for little holes in any type of um, knit, you know, t-shirt kind of thing. Um, I also do a bigger version of this on my leggings. So I have a lot of leggings or yoga pants that were in my um, mending pile and I fixed all of those today by machine, which is good. Um, it's not a spot, like something like this, an undershirt. Nobody's going to see this, so it doesn't have to look great. Uh, I still try and get a pretty good color match but, uh, but it doesn't worry me too much if it doesn't look awesome or if people can notice, um, especially with leggings and yoga pants. I don't know about you, but um, my thighs rub and so they wear out in the inner thigh area. That's not an area where people are really seeing my leggings, um, especially because I wear leggings under a dress. I'm not much for a legging and a t-shirt. Um, I might wear yoga pants around the house with a t-shirt for sure, but out in public, I tend not to. 
So I really don't think people can are ever going to see these areas. So I don't feel the need to do a great, wonderful job with them. My jeans, I tend to do a little bit more of a, um, a, a nice looking mend, whether it's a visible mend, because I do like visible mending, or whether it's invisible, which it's never really invisible, but um, minimally visible. Um, I tend to do jeans by hand. I like to do a, a, like a sashiko style, um, although I haven't formally studied that or trained. It's just kind of a trendy thing that I've seen in a lot of um, in a lot of posts online and also um, in some of the mending books that I have. I really like the book Mending Matters um, and they show you some good ways to mend jeans. So I definitely do a more um, clean looking mend on jeans but if it's stuff that I'm just wearing around the house, I don't care as much. And I know that for some people, mending is pointless. For some people, mending is a waste of time. That's fine. Um, not everybody has to do it. I think people are more likely to, um, if you're a sewist or a knitter or a crocheter, you're more likely to mend the things that you've handmade, something like this, where you know, if this got a hole or something, oh my gosh, I would mend it right away. This would be like an emergency mend. Um, because, I, you know, you want to prolong the life of something that you put so much effort into. And, you know, this is almost like an heirloom. Not that I'm saying that somebody else someday is going to want it from me, but I intend to wear this for many, many years. So, um, and maybe somebody would want it. So something like that, I know, is more approachable to start mending. Um, I think that a majority of people who even mend might mend jeans, might mend something that costs more, um, but then would be less likely to mend, um, you know, a cotton undershirt that probably costs $8, um, $10 at a store, because um, you can always find something like that on sale. Um, I think people are less likely to mend commercial socks than hand knit socks, right? Um, and the reason that I do it is not really about saving money. Um, I think saving money is great. I like to save money, um, but it, that's not really why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it because they're going to be heirlooms or because they have to look more presentable. I'm just trying to maintain the life of the garment because so often things like um, socks and undershirts and underwear, I don't make myself. I buy them. Um, they're often, they may be part cotton, but they're generally part nylon, polyamide, acrylic, something like polyester. Um, so they have synthetic fibers and it's wasteful to me to just throw those away if I can repair them. So it's more about doing what I feel is right for tiny gesture um, that I can do to prevent more use of natural resources and um, and more waste and that's that's really all it is. Um, I do use fabric recyclers if I have scrap fabrics, um, if I'm getting rid of, I, I still am human and I create waste, right? So if I'm getting rid of something, um, some type of clothing that is just way beyond my ability to repair, um, then, you know, I may end up using a fabric recycler and I like to think that those things are then recycled, just like I like to think the glass bottles and, um, even plastic containers that I put in my recycling bin are recycled, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, I can't be cause I'm not watching it go through that process. So, um, what I do know is if I'm reusing it, which sometimes means cutting apart an old t-shirt and using it as rags, right? Um, if I'm using it myself, um, then I feel a little bit better about it. So I do use old jeans that are beyond repair to be patches for the jeans that are not yet beyond repair and that I'm still fixing. And I do the same thing with scrubs, um, with um, all of my like leggings and yoga pants and stuff like that. So I'm trying to do my best. It's something that makes a difference to me. Um, but it is something that's admittedly, it's, it's really time consuming. And if I were to look at it the way that I know some of my family members would look at it, 
um, what is the cost to me in terms of what I would make hourly at a job or something like that. It is not a cost effective solution if you're looking at it that way. If you're counting the labor that I do, um, which I understand um, thinking of it that way, then it's not cost effective. So part of why I do it is to save the money of buying new things, but that is a little bit, um, it's, it's only kind of the way that I feel about it that makes me look at it that way. Um, you could definitely interpret it as my time costing money and then, then you just buy things and that's why it's pretty easy to get into a fast fashion trap. So, uh, so I do it for a reason. I think it's important. Um, I'm really trying to spread the word to get other people to mend. Um, I would love to teach mending. I think it's something that everybody should be doing, but, um, but I also think that of knitting and spinning yarn. And um, I admit that not everybody wants to do those things. I genuinely like it. Um, I find it meditative just like my knitting. So um, so today and this weekend in particular, I've been doing a lot of mending partially because of my knitting related injury. Um, I don't know if anybody has good tips to stop doing this, but I am somebody who pushes the left hand needle with my right index finger. And, uh, and I don't do it constantly. And I do it more with some needles than others, some projects than others. But, um, but I do push the needle and when I push that needle tip, sometimes I get a little crack or fissure in my finger and that's what I've got going on right now. And yesterday night I was knitting in the car, um, not driving, but I was knitting in the car and the needle just went right into that spot and it was so tender and um, my husband told me I really shouldn't knit today. So instead I've been machine knitting and mending and, you know, cooking, cleaning, laundry, all the fun stuff that we all have to do for the most part. So anyway, um, so I feel good about making a dent in my knitting pile anyway. Um, I just wanted to talk about a couple of other things. I actually have an acquisition. And I didn't bring both of them up, which is silly. But anyway... Um, I ordered Knit Brooks crochet hooks. I have not been crocheting enough lately, but um, but it is sort of my first love. So um, in terms of fiber arts, so this is a lovely crochet hook. I wonder if you can see if I cover my face here. Maybe, maybe not. I just think it's absolutely fabulous. It is lighter than I thought it would be. It's very comfortable in my hand. Um, and it has that inline hook shape, which is my preferred. I can't do the tapered hooks at all. I like the inline hooks. And um, it, it's just absolutely fabulous. So this is the smallest size she offers is the four, uh, four millimeter, or I think that's a G. Anyway, it's a really common hook size for me. So I have, as soon as these came in, I wanted to cast something on and I am making what looks like granny squares. Yes, they are granny squares. Um, you can see it's a combination of different yarns here. So this is a stash busting project. Um, some different yarns, you can kind of see these will look good together, but um, this is old yarn from my stash. So it's Bernat um, softy cotton, so like cotton and acrylic. And then um, the multicolored yarn there that has some sparkle in it is Summer Nights from Lion Brand. Um, and the Summer Nights, I think it's discontinued. It was also a cotton acrylic. It has this, um, this sparkle in it. And, um, and it's one of those yarns that early on when I didn't know enough about knitting and crocheting and I, I wasn't shopping for a project, I was just kind of shopping. Um, I loved this. I just would like squish this ball and was so excited about it. And when there was a little sale, I got it. Um, did not get enough to make a huge project. Um, I got enough that I was able to weave um, a, a little scarf with it. 
and there were some issues with that itself but uh, but I still wear the scarf and it, it's great so no complaints here because it's more of a fingering weight I'm doubling it up um, and holding you know two strands together in order to make it close to the other one um, so why am I making granny squares? Well, first of all, granny squares are fabulous. Why would I not be making granny squares with my new hooks? But uh, the actual reason is the Jethro um, cardigan. I got that pattern the day it came out from Tannis Lavely. Lavely? Lavely? She's wonderful. Anyway, uh, so this pattern is a mix of knitting and crochet. So you make a bunch of granny squares and then um, and then you combine them and you do knitted sleeves and knitted um, button band and um, and ribbing at the base. Um, and it just I saw this and I was like, I have to have this cardigan and it's perfect because I had ordered these hooks so long ago. Um, they were worth waiting for. I'm very excited about my new hooks. Um, so, yeah. I have been crocheting again when I'm not working on one of my bigger whips. Um, I'm still very much working on the night shift. Um, it's gotten a little bit bigger, but still not big enough. Um, I'm still working on the Stephen West MCAL that I picked back up that Geo Gradient from 2023. Um, I have decided that I am not doing uh, Clue 3 and 4 the way that he um, wrote them. I'm doing my own thing. So, um, so yeah, so I'm really excited about that now. Um, and I think it's going to be awesome when it's done. It's going to take a long time. So these are not whips that are magically going to be a finished object next week. Um, I will continue to probably mostly have machine knit socks as finished objects and mending as my finished object for a little while because I'm working on these big things. And, um, I, yeah, I think it works. I think it's okay to have some small things like the socks and um, some of these bigger projects that just take a really long time for me. Uh, I don't know how long is normal to spend on a sweater or a shawl, um, but for me it can take a really long time. Um, this sweater I finished in January I wasn't actively working on it the whole time. It was it was in my whip pile um, for maybe even my UFO pile for a little while. Um, I had started it. I started the spinning probably a full year before I finished the sweater. I started the sweater. I cast it on in May of 2023 and then I worked on it for a month or two stopped for a while. Um, just like with stripes, I had put these both aside to do some test knits and to do some other um, newer things to do the MCALs. Um, and then I picked it back up and finished it. So it's kind of hard to know how long it takes me to knit this sweater when I paused for four or five months. But, um, but anyway, yeah, that's okay. It's okay that it takes me a long time. So I'm okay with that. I'm trying to embrace my pace. And yeah, I'm happy to just talk about the things that I'm still working on. So I think that's it for today. Um, I have a whole bunch of whips that I have to get back to. So, um, so I'm going to go do that. But thank you for joining me. And if you're still here, um, please like, subscribe. Um, come back next week. Um, I am trying to do a weekly podcast um, and it's not always easy to make that work in my um, busy weekend time-wise, but, um, but it's important to me and I really like talking to you. So, um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this and I hope you have a good day.